welcome back to another Film Geek Movie Spotlight. It seems like I haven't done one of these in a while. I've been so busy with the new movie reviews and then the 500 subscribers. It just seems like there's been a ton of stuff on my plate and I haven't had a chance to sit down and talk about old movies in a while. So I'm happy that right before the spookiest of seasons, I have time to talk about one of my favorite childhood horror movies and that is 1983's Something Wicked This Way Comes. Now your names, gentlemen? Will Halloway, Jim Nightshade. Well, Mr. Nightshade, sir, you just go right in and tell your father that Mr. Tom Fury of the Lightning Rods presents his compliments and your house is in very urgent need of protection. Something Wicked This Way Comes is directed by Jack Clayton, and it's starring Jason Robards, Jonathan Price, Royal Dano, Pam Greer, and our two heroes, Vidal Peterson and Sean Carson. A traveling carnival shows up in a small town during the autumn season, which is kind of weird for a traveling carnival. And then, wouldn't you know it, mysteriously, adults begin to vanish all over town. Something Wicked This Way Comes is based off of a Ray Bradbury novel of the same name. In fact, Ray Bradbury also wrote the script to this film. At this time, Walt Disney Pictures was concentrating on films with more of a mature theme in an attempt to break free of the stereotype of being a family-friendly animated studio. In 1981, Disney acquired the film rights to Something Wicked This Way Comes, and it was announced that it would be going into production with an estimated $19 million budget. The studio sought Bradbury's input on selecting a cast and director. He suggested Clayton because the two of them worked so well together at Paramount Studios. He also suggested Peter O'Toole and Christopher Lee to play the character Mr. Dark, our devil character in this movie. However, Disney decided to go a different way and they hired Jonathan Price, probably because he cost a lot less money. The film was released April 29th, 1983, and it grossed only $8.4 million on that estimated $19 million budget. Critics also were a little divided on the film, and it's currently sitting on Rotten Tomatoes at a 59% critic score, but a 64% audience score. So the film does have a bit of a cult following. So what do I like about this movie? This film was my introduction into the dark, atmospheric horror genre. This is the film that kind of taught me that things don't have to constantly be jumping out at you to make you scared. This film has an amazing, overwhelming feeling of dread from the moment you see the carnival till the very end of the film. And it really does a good job of being just scary enough for kids, but not so scary that they're going to be peeing the bed at night. The acting in this film is also great. Each one of the actors does a really good job in the role that they're handed. The kids also do a really good job. I'm sometimes a little hard on, you know, child actors because sometimes they could be, well, let's just face it, not that good. They're not very experienced and they're just not that good. These two do an excellent job in this film, and which is good because they are the main characters and are on screen most of the time. But the performance I want to talk about in this movie is Jonathan Price. He knocks it out of the ballpark as our character, Mr. Dark. And he is my first run in with a devil-like character in any movie and to this day still creeps the hell out of me every time I see him on screen. He is so memorable as this character that even as an adult there are moments in this movie where you're going to look at him and go, man. That guy's spooky. This movie is also one of the few actual Halloween themed horror films that you can find. And I also think one of the biggest things that hurt this movie when it came out was not the fact that it was just a horror movie made by Disney, which I'm sure it didn't help because I'm sure a lot of people were like, what the hell does Disney know about a freaking horror movie? Much like the good luck they had with uh, Black Hole also. What the hell does Disney know about a freaking Black Hole? And yeah, it's not the best. There are some reshoots that look really out of place. And you could tell because they were a year later. And yeah, kids grow fast. Let's just put that, let's just say that kids grow fast. So there are some reshoots in this that are a little bit noticeable. But other than that, this is a really, really good, solid family horror film that you can set down with your fam this Halloween and watch the little ones get a little spooked. But 
not that much. And by the way, just in case you're worried, there is a scene, now mind you, it's imagination, but there is a scene where a kid gets his head cut off. Normally at this point in my video is where I tell you where you can find this movie streaming or rental or whatever, and as luck would have it, this movie is nowhere to be found. I honestly think that Disney is trying to bury this movie. Now when I was gathering information, they said that there was a reboot that was announced in 2014, but I don't know anything about that. I couldn't even find anything on it much at all on uh, IMDB or anything like that so I don't know how necessarily true that is plus it's uh, 2022 and nothing has come of it so I honestly think that this movie is being buried by Disney maybe it'll show up on their streaming service coming you know now that they have m movies that are themed for an older audience on there this is also a good movie they can throw on Hulu but for some reason Disney's hiding it from us because it's not out there. So as of right now, the only way you can watch this movie is if you happen to have it on DVD. This is an out of print DVD from 2004. And there's also a printing of this DVD from, two, excuse me, 1999. And that is all the info I can find on that too. And that's one of the main reasons I feel Disney is just completely just, you know, burying this film because it's not even out there. There's not even new copies of this on DVD, which is really kind of odd for a Disney film. Okay, guys, well, unfortunately, no good news on how you can see this, but if you enjoy what you saw here today, don't forget to su subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for notifications, and give me the old thumbs up so I know you like what you're seeing. And if there's one more thing you can do, folks, that is keep watching movies. You know I'm gonna...